Number 10. Sakasan Maru. Any wreck diver's holy grail is diving in Truck Lagoon. The wrecks here are spectacular and offer great dives steeped in a World War II history. The U.S. strike on the Japanese Navy and airfield on the islands that circled the lagoon during World War II resulted in this famous metal graveyard. As it was codenamed, Operation Hailstorm significantly harmed Japan's war-making capacity while assisting the Allies in their combat. Sankasan Maru is one of these wrecks, a remarkable piece of history where you will find not only a thrilling adventure, but also a variety of items to spice up the entire excursion. The Sankasan Maru was a transport ship built in 1942. In 1943, the Japanese Navy took her over and transformed it into a military transport ship for special cargo missions. During Operation Hailstone, U.S. dive bombers sank her. During the military operation, the Japanese suffered massive losses with an entire fleet being annihilated. Within Truck Lagoon, the Sankasan Maru is currently lying at the bottom of the ocean at the depth of 152 feet. You can only reach it by diving with scuba gear. Don't be shocked if you come across a skull. Many say the shipwrecks at Truck Lagoon are the ultimate resting place for hundreds of slain Japanese sailors and soldiers, so don't be surprised if you see one. Sankasan Maru is now one of the best coral and artifact sites in the world. The Japanese originally docked this small to medium-sized freighter on Uman Island's west coast, lurking close to other larger empty ships, drawing the Americans' major concentration of bombs and torpedoes. Her captain made the small decision to bring her crew to shore and ditch their floating bomb, allowing them to fight for the Emperor on another day. 7.7mm rounds in wooden crates, a small number of 20mm cannon ammunition, huge detonators, 284 depth charges under tarps, and a few monster artillery shells are among the munitions in the load. Divers recovered 284 depth charges and many more shells. You just said that. Picric acid from the explosives inside the ordnance poured into the water during the recovery, killing the marine life near the wreck for several years. The last thing divers found was hundreds upon hundreds of little glass bottles. Some experts believe that these were used to carry chinin, or quinine as it is now known today, an anti-malaria medication. That the crew brought medicine and ammunition so close together seems odd. One represents life, while the other represents death. Isn't it confusing? Number 9. Nippo Maru During the devastation of Operation Hailstorm in 1944, Avenger bombers from the USS Essex sealed the destiny of the Nippo Maru by dropping three bombs on its cargo ship. Interestingly, likely the most famous naval pilot to fly the Avenger was George H.W. Bush would later become the 41st President of the United States. He joined the Navy in 1942 and became the youngest naval pilot ever in June 1943. This compelling wreck has now become a strong favorite, with divers visiting truck because of its unique and varied cargo. Because it's lying upright 157 feet from the beach, your dive time will be valuable, so you'll need to plan to see all the other sites. Starting in the front holds, which are stocked with relics such as bronze cannon rangefinders, gas masks, teapots, bottles, and a variety of ammunition. The thrill begins almost immediately. The wreckage of a vehicle and a single, complete combat tank stand out to the side of the port deck, obscured by a massive bridge. Divers can find three howitzer field guns on the slightly shallower starboard rear deck, just around the superstructure. If you're a skilled diver, you may look through the rear cargo holds, which are full of cannon parts, medical supplies, and radios. A visit to the must-see bridge, where the steering helm still stands erect, is part of this incredible dive. You may look out the wreck's window for a breathtaking view of the forward deck, from which it's easy to appreciate the crew's terror as a swarming American plane struck. Number 8. Shinkoku Maru The Shinkoku Maru may not be the most well-known wreck and truck, but among aficionados, it routinely reaches the top 10 list of favorites. Among being bombed and torpedoed, the massive oil tanker sank vertically, and with only 49 feet to the bridge, it is a dive site for everyone. Drop to the seabed at roughly 124 feet and enter the aft hole through a massive torpedo burst hole to reach the tight and slightly lower engine room. Be informed that there are human remains in this area and promise not to scream if you see one. With careful planning, you can then embark on an adventurous voyage down the ship's bowels to the desolate upper engine room, which is bathed in strange emerald light. The sun-drenched deck is a kaleidoscope of color, covered in robust, hard, and soft corals, and swarming with reef fish, 
the entire length of the deck. There are washrooms, a tiled bath, and a lavatory in the ship's infirmary. Divers can frequently observe an operating table nearby, packed with pharmaceutical bottles placed on top by divers. The commander's quarters are above, beneath the most beautiful bridge you'll ever see, which is covered with pink, white, and soft orange corals that encircle not one, but three intact telegraphs. Number 7. Fujikawa Maru Expert divers have rated the Fujikawa Maru as one of the top wreck dives in the world over the years. Time has taken its toll, and it's no longer in its prime, but it is still a fantastic dive, and we can only imagine how magnificent it must have been back in the 1970s and 80s. The Japanese built this ship in 1938 as a passenger cargo ship, and it saw a lot of activity before being sunk, lying upright at 115 feet below the surface. The massive coral-encrusted gun at the bow, whose brass plate reveals manufacturers produced it in Britain in 1899 when the United Kingdom and Japan were allies, is one of the most notable characteristics. The propeller blades, aircraft engines, and torpedoes in Hold 1 are among the items crammed into the storage rooms. As you enter Hold 2, the jackpot is much higher, as there's not only wings, but also full fuselages of Mitsubishi Zero fighter planes. Not very many American fighter pilots survived on their own in a twistling, turning, close-up dogfight against a highly trained Japanese pilot flying a Mitsubishi A6M Zero during World War II. The Japanese had fewer than 500 Zeros by December 1941, but they were busy producing more. Throughout the war, Mitsubishi manufactured 3,800 Zeros. In addition, Nakajima also produced another 6,200, and Sasebo, Hitachi, and Nakajima built 844 between them, bringing the total to over 10,000 planes. If you dig a little further, you'll find a tool-filled workshop. Over time, the central superstructure and bridge portions have deteriorated. Divers who visited decades ago described them as mostly undamaged. They're now sinking inwards, with equipment like the bridge controls long ago vanished. The story of the Fujikawa Maru exemplifies why people should visit the wrecks of Truck Lagoon as soon as possible. It's still awe-inspiring, but how much longer can it be? No one can tell. Number 6. Heian Maru Once upon a time, the great Heian Maru was a luxurious passenger and cargo ship. Her enemies sunk her after they deployed multiple torpedoes and bombs killing 18 people on board. It's the atoll's largest wreck, lying on its side at a depth of 33 feet. You can see the ship's name prominently displayed in large letters on the bow. Dropping over the side will take you to a few holds, where you can observe artillery munitions and torpedoes from her wartime career as a submarine tender. As you progress, you'll reach the wreck's main superstructure, where even the companionways are worth exploring. Divers can see submarine periscopes with a length of around 50 feet here. The superstructure's inside is hollow, but most of the intriguing objects have fallen to the bottom. Hold 3 is further back and has no cargo, but two deck cannons are nearby, perhaps thrown there when the enemies bombarded the ship. The cargo includes beer bottles, gas masks, oxygen bottles, and wooden cases. The Hikawa Maru, the Haiyan Maru's sister ship, was one of only two big Japanese passenger ships to survive World War II. The Japanese have permanently anchored her in Yokohama as a museum ship. Would you rather explore a sunken battleship or an underwater passenger vessel? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. San Francisco Maru This is the wreck that many technical divers consider to be on the top of their bucket list, and for good reason. Dive bombers struck the 384-foot vessel, which was built as a cargo and passenger ship in 1919 six times before sinking her. The wreck is located 213 feet below the surface in beautiful clear water. The holds that take you deeper within the ship are full of interesting things, such as the mines, shells, and bombs strewn across hold one. The Chiquis, who risked their lives hunting explosives to carry out the deadly practice of dynamite fishing, recovered many, during which none of them died. In hold two, divers can see more munitions, trucks, and aircraft components as well as containers of machinery and dinnerware. Explorers can also see the wreckage of a flatbed truck with a third tank standing on its port side. Holds 3 and 4 are just around the corner, and they're crammed with explosives, torpedoes, and even more vehicles. Number 4. Fumizuki Destroyer The Fumizuki was a specialized Japanese Navy destroyer with no Maru attached to its name. 
It is a 318-foot Matuki-class destroyer built in 1926 that was in truck for repairs after attack by U.S. planes near Rabaul on January 4, 1944. It is one of the only two made-for-war ships that sunk in truck. As part of the Tokyo Express, Fumizuki assisted Japanese soldiers in the assault of Guadalcanal before the Rabaul disaster. Her crew abandoned her when she lost power after being bombed during Operation Hailstone but failed to realize that the crew had dropped the ship's anchor to avoid drifting onto the reef. This cruiser, which measures around 100 feet, still has an intact bow and stern, weapons, and a torpedo launcher. Because the Japanese built it as a warship rather than a more pleasant passenger ship, the spaces on board are noticeably smaller. What would you do if you discovered a live bomb on the wreckage's floor? Let us know in the comments below. Number 3. Hokimaru The Hokimaru was a cargo ship with 12 guest accommodations that was originally the British New Zealand ship Haraki. William Denny and brothers launched her on the 28th of November 1921 in Dumberton, Scotland. The vessel was owned by the Union Steamship Corporation of New Zealand in 1942, and Japanese auxiliary cruisers captured her while on a voyage from Fremanto to Colombo. The Japanese renamed the Hokimaru and classified it as a special transport. The ship left Yokohama in early January 1944 with a full cargo of coal and other defensive materials headed for truck. She didn't have time to unload her cargo before enemies bombarded and sank her when she arrived. The seabed where the Hoki presently lies is around 120 feet away, although the main ship's part is only 80 feet away. The cargo of undamaged trucks and tractors, which sit partially on the hatch, has made the catastrophe famous. Mudguards, headlamps, and tires are all seen on the trucks. Some of the side windows still have their glass. A steamroller and a bulldozer are also present. They're all crammed in close quarters, and it's a little unsettling to watch them all sitting in the yellow-green light. Clouds of silt quickly hide them. Rice bowls, glass containers, mostly bottles, and several unusual toilet bowls litter the Hokie to this day. Number 2. Rio de Janeiro Maru The Rio de Janeiro Maru was an eight-deck luxury liner that transported people and freight from Japan to many parts of the world, including South America, South Africa, and the United States before World War II. She served six submarines after being converted as a submarine tender for the Japanese Navy in 1944. Japan reclassified her as a transport ship after it lost most of its submarines. At least one bomb dropped from an Essex plane sank the Rio de Janeiro. She's presently at a depth of 131 feet on her starboard side. The wreck includes a vast engine compartment with many knobs, gauges, and pipes that are easily accessible. The bottle room a hold with stacked cartons of beer bottles is also acceptable. The ship's propellers are likewise quite picturesque. To inspect this entire ship, you'll need many dives. And number one, Aikoku Maru. Aikoku Maru loaded the 629 troops of the 66th Naval Guard Unit with ammunition, supplies, and building materials on January 21, 1944. The submarine USS Trigger attacked the convoy 300 nautical miles northwest of Truk. The Aikoku Maru was unharmed and arrived in Truk on February 1st. She returned to Truk on February 16th after an abortive voyage to Brown Island to find that most of the ships have departed the base to prepare for an expected American onslaught. Aikoku began loading ammunition and preparing for the first amphibious brigade's departure in Rabaul. Operation Hailstorm began before the crew had finished preparations with the U.S. Navy Task Force 58 striking truck every hour for two days, with many airstrikes supplied by nearly 150 aircraft. The carrier USS Intrepid bombed Aikoku Maru on the first day, February 17, 1944, with the first bomb exploding in the officer's wardroom, creating a fire. In this attack, enemies hit her three more times, and in the second attack, a torpedo that set off the munitions in her number one hold hit her, shearing off the bow. Most of the 945 crew and passengers died as the ship sank in two minutes. Researchers documented it as one shipwreck that claimed many lives. Most of the ship's armory, as well as the gothic skeleton remains of those killed during the raid, are still intact. Have you ever been on a diving expedition? Tell me about your experience in the comments. Remember to subscribe to see more exciting videos. See you next time.